You bring us tidings of joy. Right, you know I'm usually doom and gloom. And I'm here to tell you that I don't think things will be quite as bad as we have discussed in the past. And if you look at forecasts for 2023, each forecast we see is a little bit less gloomy than what came before. So we had the, the Treasury came out with a forecast in November. The Office for Budget Responsibility was a little bit more optimistic. Both are more optimistic than the Bank of England. So I don't think things will be quite as bad as we think. Think. And in fact, elsewhere, some of our statistics here in the UK are lagged. Elsewhere, things have not been as bad as economists have forecast. Question is, I mean, we are going to be in a recession. We're probably in one now. It doesn't appear that unemployment, this is what we care about, right? Mm -hmm. We talk about recession. What does it mean? Where it really hits us is when we lose jobs, when pay falls, when you can't get a job. Unemployment is unlikely to rise all that high simply because the workforce is, is, is getting smaller. We can't figure out why all of these people between the ages of 40 and 55 are leasing the workforce. Mm -hmm. Bank of England's really puzzled by that. So we shouldn't see unemployment go very high. What we will see, though, is wages are not going to keep up with inflation. So we're all looking at a pay cut. Uh, well, the other thing people will be very interested to hear from you is about interest rates, of course, in, in relation to their mortgages. They've been rising steadily following what the Fed does in the United States. Uh, how's the forecast looking for 2023? Okay, this is fascinating because the Federal Reserve and the European Central Bank are saying we know there could be a recession, but we're going to tame inflation. We are going to continue to aggressively raise interest rates. The Bank of England's been a little bit cagier. And in fact, the last time the Bank of England lifted interest rates in December, two people, so nine people vote on the, on the MP, Monetary Policy Committee. You know what I'm going to say yeah, here. Yeah. Two voted to keep rates on hold. That is quite extraordinary. One rated, voted for a, a bigger interest rate than the half point we got. So the Bank of England is very, very divided. This is something, I'm sorry, I almost cut you off there, but this fascinates me. A couple of months ago, a guy called Hugh Pill, who's the chief economist at the Bank of England, you know I talk about this guy a lot. He said, we're going to keep raising rates. We don't care if we're unpopular. What? A central banker even talking about the word popularity, that is a little bit weird. And when you say, I don't care about being popular, clearly you do care about being popular. It raises the question of whether the Bank of England has the nerve to keep raising interest rates if unemployment does start to tick up. Yeah, and I suppose that is where that debate's happening on the MPC, the Monetary Policy Committee, because the, everybody has the shared goal of wanting to make any recession as short and as shallow as possible, but the debate is whether or not raising interest rates is going to make it worse or better. A absolutely, and, and central banks are looking at a playbook from the 1980s. This is the last time mm. we saw inflation go this high, so they're doing exactly what they did then. If we look at some of the other central banks that started raising rates before we did, central banks like Brazil, the Czech Republic, and these are countries that have a much more recent experience of inflation than we do. They're not seeing inflation come down as quickly as they would have hoped. So if it's raising rates the right thing to do right now, that's a big question. And on the other hand, we have Rishi Sunak saying, we can't give people pay rises because that could be inflationary. That's a problem as well. I don't think that that's true. And I think that to give nurses a bit of a pay rise is not necessarily going to fuel inflation. But I think this will be the big economic argument that we see play out over the next month. And how do all of these interconnected issues play into growth, which is, of course, what Liz Truss wanted to try and stimulate to try and get the economy kick-started? Are we looking at growth I, in the I first couple of quarters? I love when Liz, Liz Truss would talk about this, because what does growth mean? She talked about it, and she talked about it as if it's an unalloyed good. And it is an unalloyed good, but growth tends to mean more people have jobs. It tends to mean the economy is growing. We all get pay rises. I think the economy will probably bump along. I think we'll probably end 2023 roughly where we are now. But I think if we do contract, that's what a recession is, I don't think it will be all that painful. It's wages that will be very, very difficult, particularly for public sector workers. And Laurie, you know, everyone talks about economic forecasts being, you know, famously unreliable. 
um, but obviously no one can predict if there are going to be huge unforeseeables like a pandemic, like a war in Ukraine. We still don't know what's going to happen with Putin and the impact on energy prices and, and that's the impact that's having on, on cost of living. So, you know, obviously we can't predict the unpredictable, but we have to factor that in, don't we? Uh, and that has been the Bank of England's get-out-of-jail-free card. We couldn't have seen this. We couldn't have seen a war. We couldn't have seen a pandemic. And, and that's what the Bank of England has used as an ex excuse. sounds like the wrong word. Andrew Bailey, the head of the Bank of England, is right. These are black swan events. These are things that we couldn't have predicted. It does make predicting things much more complicated. But the Bank of England thought inflation would go much higher than it has. They were looking at inflation peaking at 13 percent. It now looks like we're peaking at about 11 percent, which is still very, very high, but not as bad as we thought. So I'd say take forecasts with a bit of a grain of salt, particularly right now where the forecasts are so varied. They're, uh, you know, kind of all over the place. Usually you see forecasts clustered around a mean. We're not seeing that this time around.